Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. Today is August 11th. It is a Thursday. Don't ask me where the week has gone. Don't ask me where the summer has gone, and don't ask me where the year has gone. I can't answer that question. Time just flies, and days just run into each other. It's about 7.57. The market's going to open up in about an hour and 33 minutes to be specific with you and the markets is roaring today i mean really really roaring this rally is a little bit surprising but it's not too surprising and i'll show you why before i get into the goodies if you look at the dow jones right now we've been really running up but here's the problem let me extend the time period we're still below the 200 day moving average so this looks very much to me like this or this where the market hits the 200 day moving average and bounces down especially in light of the fact that RSI levels are really overdone. If we were rallying to new highs like this, I this would be a very, very different story. But we're barely, barely, barely heading towards the 200-day moving average. And if you look at the QQQ, you will see that the story is very similar. We're actually even further away from the 200-day moving average. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the market bounce back down away from the 200-day moving average. Now, again, if we're above the 200-day moving average, that's a whole different story. But a rally to the 200-day moving average in a bearish trend doesn't excite me nearly as much as a pullback back down. That's where the excitement happens. Because remember, we want to go with the trend, so we want to follow the trend back down. And the trend has been going against us because we're uh, going, uh, we're trying to go down on an on a short-term uptrend and a long-term downtrend. I hope that makes some sense because again, we wait for pullbacks to the upside or or extensions to the upside to short, but right now with the downtrend, we gotta wait because this usually bounces right at the 200 day or even before like we're seeing right now. So don't be surprised to see the market turn around and start consolidating because the data is really, really good, but it's not good enough to turn this thing around just yet. So this is telling me that the market is suckering in a bunch of weak hands and it's gonna start turning around a lot sooner than later. So don't give up on that. Another major factor is the bond market. Look, the bond market isn't going higher, which means the rate inflationary pressure is starting to peak up again. Um, not too much, we did go to about 120 and I wanted to sell it here and I did once, but I didn't get off the second time on the trade. But the bottom line is the fact that the bond market is not going higher gives us a lot of clues that the stock market is going to fall back into this trend, into this range. Because again, we're not out of the danger zone just yet. Now, the market is up uh, pretty good right now, but let's see how it does after today's PPI report. Now, the PPI is supposed to show, this is producer's price index. We had the CPI, which was really good because, and I'll go through that in a second, but this is what we're expecting. We're expecting the core number, the X food and energy to be lower, and we're expecting the year over year to be lower. If that's the case, that's again a sign that inflation is peaking out on the producer's level, higher up in the food chain. But when you look here, look at the CPI, this came out. We were expecting 9.1, we got 8.5. We were expecting 6.1, we got 5.9. So if we can show that, that inflation has peaked, at least for now, on the consumer and on the producer's level, that can cause another rally. But again, I even have a system that, that fades stocks that are hitting the 200-day moving average to the downside. And I'm telling you right now, this looks like a reversal ready to happen a lot more than a bull run. And also another major clue to this is look at how many stocks are making 20-day breakouts, 478. And look at how many stocks are making 20-day breakdowns, 24. Now we're still in a bearish market, right? We're still below the 200 day moving average. You've got 400, almost 500 to 24. That ratio is way too high. This is again telling us that the market is just too strong for its own good right now. Now, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a perma bear and I'm not a per perma bull. I'm very specific and I have no objectivity in terms of, uh, I have no subjectivity in terms of favoring a bull or a bear market. I'm just going with what's what's here. And right now, it looks a lot more like a pullback from a bear market than it looks like a reversal up to the upside. I want to see this type of price action above the 200-day moving average for at least a month before I believe this market is going to go back up. This is just a reversal back, and this is just consolidation. This is just going to lead to a consolidation, 
which is very similar to what we're seeing in the bond market, in my opinion. Now, let's talk about global economy. This will kind of summarize a lot what we talked about right now. Stocks are at a three-month high. That's right, the Dow and S&P are at a three-month high as investors cheered a report showing inflation cooled more than expected in July. That's the CPI data. But again, we're not out of danger zone yet because we're still below the 200-day moving average. The U.S. government said Wednesday that consumer inflation jumped 8.5% in July from a year earlier. That was down from June 4, decade high of 9.1%. So things are moving in the right direction, but we're not out of danger zone yet. And we still have war, folks. On Wednesday, the S&P surged 2.1% on expectation that slower inflation will mean the Federal Reserve may moderate its interest rate hike, and I believe they will. But even if they do, it's still going to be a very choppy period for quite some time, especially for techs and cryptocurrencies. Techs, cryptos, other investments that have been among the year's biggest losers uh, led the way higher. NASDAQ, who um, many, who, obviously you guys know that NASDAQ has mostly growth and expensive stocks. They're the most vulnerable to interest rates. They went the highest up. But again, don't, don't be fooled by this. Despite the improved U.S. inflation readings, analysts warned that the war on higher prices is not over. You heard that? Gasoline prices paid by American drivers dipped just under $4 for the first time in more than five months. Thank God. Good news for consumers who are struggling. Inflation data encouraged traders to scale back, back bets for how much the Fed will raise rates at its next meeting. The 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 base the uh, we're, we're away from the one basis point. We're now at whether we're going to go 0.75 or 0.50 we were at like 65 70 percent we were going to go 0.75 now we're at 33 percent as of yesterday and now we're at 66 don't quote me on this specific fraction but 66.5 or like 67 percent that 0.5 not 0.75 is going to be the one so it's a very interesting period but 0.5 isn't all that great either okay so so it's a relief rally in my opinion it's not a bull run recession worries have built as the highest inflation in 40 years squeeze households and corporations around the world. Wall Street is closely watching to see if the Fed can succeed in hitting the brakes on economy and cooling inflation without veering into a recession. And I think they can. I think we're actually a lot deeper into this recession than we originally thought. And I think we're on the way out, but not quite yet, especially in light of the fact that we're trading below the 200-day moving average. And inflationary pressure is still there quite a bit. It's not at a 40-year high, but it's like at a 30-year high still. So we're not out of the woods just yet. The Federal Reserve will get a few more highly anticipated reports before its next announcement on interest rates on September 22nd. Today is the 11th, so that's 10 days from now. Those include hiring trends due September 2nd and the next coming update on consumer inflation, which happens September 13th. I'll be watching that one very, very, very carefully. That's happening in what, in uh, today, this, uh, in about a month. So very, very important. Now, I want to talk about sectors. Sectors, sectors, sectors. Let's talk about different sectors. So in terms of the strength and weakness, energy and utilities, you still have defensiveness. Now, I know, I know, consumer discretionary technology has been rocking and rolling and hitting that one-month highs, but I'm telling you, it's an aberration for now. It's not, it's not, we're not there quite yet, especially with communication services being down and this being fairly fragmented. Um, I mean, look at this. You've got healthcare here, consumer staples here, technology here, consumer, this is all over the place. The market needs to consolidate and cool off. This right here, if folks, I'm telling you right now, 90% chance this rally will fade before we hit the 200 day or near the 200 day, unless data starts coming out really, really good. And I just don't see it yet. Um, now, so wait for a pullback here. Let's move back into our sectors. If we look at the charts, energy looks like it, it, it's waiting to come up a little bit. I think energy is gonna go higher. I like utilities right now because they're breaking above this level here. Um, technology, i very, very cautious right now. Industrial, I would be very, very cautious right now. Consumer staples, I still like quite a bit. Real estate's looking pretty interesting right now. I like healthcare quite a bit right now. Consumer discretionary, I don't like. Communication services, I think are gonna lag. Uh, basic materials could go a little bit higher and financial could go a little bit higher. Financial and real estate could go a little bit higher because higher rates could 
uh, possibly benefit uh, banks. And, and, and I'm seeing some more upside on financial. They're actually mirroring each other pretty good right now. Financials and real estate are mirroring each other. Um, communication services kind of doing its own, and basic materials are doing their own thing. Um, industrial technology and consumer discretionary are a little too overdone. And I really like healthcare and I like consumer staples. I like this consolidation that we're seeing right now. I like utilities and I think energy is going to start moving up to 80 once again. Now, before I let you go, I've got something important to tell you. So earnings, 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 earnings. Block is coming out. Square is coming out. Consensus for Block second quarter, 17 cents. That's a 74% year over year decline. I think they're going to beat this by a fraction. And I think revenue is going to be about 6.4, maybe about 7% lower. But we've got other stocks coming out. And here you could see the estimates. Brookfield Asset Management, big stock. Uh, Canada Goose, Dillard's, Flower Foods. Let's see here. Neos coming out. That's an interesting one. Six Flags. I want to see how pe people are uh, traveling, I mean, are going out again. That'll be a very interesting one. Amusement Parks. Um, that's about it. Nothing crazy. Precious metals. But again, you could see we're, we're, we're starting to cool off a little bit on earnings. Keep in mind, you've got, um, you've got Square, Block, and you've got uh, DraftKing tomorrow. And here are the numbers. They're expecting 9% less year over year on 46.2% year over year revenue. Now, folks, listen to me very carefully. I believe, I believe, I am going to right now put my money back into the energy sector i think energies are going to heat up again and xle let's go to xle let me give you an option on that i think we're going to see a little more upside from the energy market so i think we can go to november we've got plenty of liquidity right here oh beautiful 76 you got a good good uh good liquidity right here and the spreads aren't too bad. You may want to wait till after the market, uh, as the market closes to get in this, or work the order starting at the bid and work little by little till you get filled. Don't place market orders. Or at least wait till the second half of the day where the spreads are tight. But I like the 76, and uh, I would buy the 76, and I'd probably sell the 80. Or buy the 76 and sell the 80. Yeah, I'd buy the 76. Yeah, scratch the 80. I'd buy the 76, and I'd sell the 82, that's a really good one. I mean, look at that, three, uh, $5 and about $3. You'll end up paying about two bucks for this and you'll have a good run up uh, potential. All right, now, before I let you go, I've got something exciting, interesting, and always educational. I just opened up enrollment to a unique opportunity, a three-part virtual workshop on how to build your own front runner portfolio. I've been asked to do this for years now. You'll learn the inner workings of how to optimize a portfolio based on hard back tested data. I'm going to show you all the back tests so you'll understand not what to do, but why you need to do it. I'm going to show you what makes my decisions so you understand exactly how I come up with what I come up with. I'm not just going to tell you a bunch of stuff and ask you to believe it. I've got data to back it up. Now, I think learning this could give you an autonomy over your money and take your trading skills to a totally new level. Once you have this back test data and understand why it'll give you confidence it'll make you understand why the markets work the way they do and why they do the way they do and why i trade the way i do i give you signals the way i do so you can get your ticket to my front runner portfolio workshop by clicking the link below here's the breakdown of what you're going to learn how to build a custom build your own custom etf core factors behind front runner stocks the selection process the portfolio management all is going to be there for you. And I'll, I'll even talk about uh, debit spreads, all right? I'll even talk about how to, how to make it cheaper. It'll be fun. And it's going to be three hours, but you know how I roll. I'll, it'll probably be over three hours, probably be like four or five hours, if I had to guess. It'll be recorded for you. It'll be awesome. I promise you'll have a great time. And right now, if there's ever been a time in history to start thinking about creating your own ETF, folks, I'm telling you right now, in 50 years, this is probably the best time. Markets are crazy and they're getting ready to trend again. Maybe not quite yet, but soon. And this is the best time to know which stocks are trending, which ETFs are trending, why buy now, how many to buy, how many to hold, what's your drawdown, what's your risk, what does the fingerprint of what you're doing look like? 
it's really interesting to see the data 20 30 year 10 year back tests you guys got to check it out you're going to love this click the link below and get your ticket and i hope to see you there you're going to love this and it's recorded you'll be able to show your kids your family this is the best money spent and it's not expensive you're gonna love it follow the link below send me love letters comments feedback i want to hear from you bye guys i'll see you soon bye